Being an old research man myself with an advertising agency named Blair, Thomas, and Kane, I once looked up the source of that old chestnut about coming events casting their shadows before. It's from a rather obscure poem called Lochiel's Warning by an English poet named Thomas Campbell. I've used the quotation many times, but actually you never know what shadow is foretelling what event. I know I didn't have the slightest inkling that I was in for the biggest event in my life when Dr. Johnson said to me, Well, as a matter of fact, since midnight, every baby that's been born in the hospital has been a boy. The CBS Radio Workshop, dedicated to man's imagination, the theater of the mind. Today, The Big Event, a fantasy for radio by Gloria Dapper and Draper Lewis. A fantasy about the law of averages, and the day the law of averages ran out. It may seem like ancient history going over that day now, but everyone else has had a chance to tell what happened to them, so why shouldn't I? I was in the waiting room of the maternity ward of a hospital when it all started. There were four or five other guys sweating it out with me. We'd been there most of the night. It was close to 1.30 in the morning. But it wasn't quiet like it usually is at that time in a hospital. Mr. Blair, my boss, had arrived around 10 to keep me company. At least that was his excuse for bending my ear for three solid hours. I kept saying to him, uh, look, Mr. Blair, you don't have to bother waiting with me. It may be hours before anything happens. It's my pleasure, Danny, my complete pleasure. Now, just relax. Old E.C. Blair is quarterbacking this play. And there's no reason in the world why we can't improve each shining hour with a little business for Blair, Thomas, and King. Well, Mr. Blair, I told you my dad wouldn't be interested in that kind of a deal. If you're interested, Danny, he'll be interested. Well, you don't know him the way I do. He never wants to... Oh, just a minute, Mr. Blair. No, I'm sorry, Mr. No. Not yet. Uh, Mr. Vance? Yeah, I'm Vance. It's a boy, Mr. Vance. You just follow me. Another boy? Well, what are you gonna do? So maybe we'll end up with a basketball team. Calling Dr. Johnson. Dr. Johnson, please. Oh, I wonder what all this excitement's about anyway. I wish Adele were here. Adele? Uh, Maggie's mother. She was due in from Europe tonight on the Washington. She said she'd come straight to the hospital. Well, maybe she was held up going through customs or getting a cab from the pier. Uh, Danny, look. You don't want to spend the rest of your life in research. You're cut out for bigger things, boy. There's no reason why you couldn't end up being captain of the team. But you've got to get in there and fight. You can't just sit around waiting for Lady Luck to hand you the ball. You make your own luck, boy. You grab that ball and run. Now, that's all I'm asking you to do. Well, I don't know how I could explain it to him. Oh, well, there's nothing to explain. Just ask your dad to get on the phone with that chain of drugstores he's got and tell him to duck every other headache pill except Banish. Make sure Banish is right there where everyone can see it. And buy it. Get the clerks to push him a little. Just a little push, that's all. Well, what about the new ad campaign on Banish? Well, use that, too. But you need a little something extra riding for you if you want things your way, my boy. If your dad gets banished starting up the field, no one can stop us. Nobody has to wait for the breaks if he's smart, my boy. And you're smart, Danny. And boy, for you, Mr. Marin, the nurse will be out in a minute to take you into your wife. Danny? Any news yet, doctor? Not yet. Might as well go home and get some sleep. I could use some myself. Come on, I'll walk you down the hall. Uh, Mr. Blair? Coming, Danny boy. Maggie's okay, isn't she, Doctor? She's fine. <laughs> Be nice if it's a girl. We sort of planned on a little girl. You better keep your fingers crossed. You see. You mean you think it's going to be a boy? Well, as a matter of fact, since midnight, every baby that's been born in the hospital has been a boy. Calling Dr. Johnson. Dr. Johnson, please. <laughs> We left the hospital on the Lexington Avenue side. Mr. Blair hailed a cab and offered to drop me off. But just then, a second cab pulled over to the curb, and I told him I'd take my own since I was going over to the west side, and he lived east on Sutton Place. As the cab pulled out into the early morning traffic, I kept thinking about what Mr. Blair had told me, the call he wanted me to make to Dad in the morning. And especially I kept thinking about Maggie and the baby and how much easier it would be if we had a little extra dough coming in. I didn't even hear the driver when he said... Funny thing about the traffic tonight. It's all been going the same direction Was it really midnight. right to try to twist chance your way? 
And what would happen if you did? It's all gone west, too. Lucky thing you live on the west side. A what? I said it's a lucky thing you live on the west side. The traffic's all been going west since midnight. Anything strange about that? No. It's all been going downtown, too. Every place except near Pier 32. Oh, what a mess that is. Pier 32? That's where the Washington dock. Brother, what a mess. You might even call it a riot. Get me over there, fast. Mr. Fires, you ought to stay in a cab. You'll never get on a pier to that crowd. Now wait for me here. All right, you heard what I said. No one else is allowed on the pier. Now just keep moving and no one will get hurt. Officer, please, I've got to get on the pier. There's a member of my family getting off the Washington. I don't care if it's Marilyn Monroe. No one's allowed out on the pier. It ain't safe the way it is now. Well, what's happened? What's going on out there? Look for yourself. There hasn't been a passenger off that liner yet that hasn't had the baggage under the letter R. Well, that's ridiculous. That's impossible. Ridiculous or impossible? That's the way it is. 1,800 passengers getting off that liner and all the names starting with the letter R. Figure it out for yourself, mister. I went home, made a pot of coffee, and sat down to wait. Two hours later, the front doorbell rang. I opened the door, and Adele said to me, the next time I marry a man named Robertson, please drag me away from the altar. Oh, where's my bedroom? I'm dead. The next morning, Adele and I decided that everything that had happened the night before, the babies, the traffic, the mess at the pier, everything had just been one of those freak accidents. Well, what else could it be? I had done a lot of thinking about more important things. I decided that maybe E.C. Blair was right after all. Why should I spend the rest of my life in research? It wasn't much fun being a permanent little fish in a big pond. I'd been waiting too long for Lady Luck to toss a little extra loot my way. And now for the first time, I had the chance to make things work the way I wanted them. I went into the living room and picked up the phone. Long distance. I want to make a person-to-person -person call to Mr. John Nolan, Sunshine Drug Corporation, Chicago. The number is Temple 34573. It wasn't until I left the apartment that I started to find out what was really going on. At first, it just seemed like one coincidence after another. I stopped by the newsstand, and Pete said to me... You're going to have to take another paper this morning, Mr. Nolan. I've been all sold out of the time since 7.30. And the bus driver was yelling... No, no, I can't change another five. Aren't they making anything except five-buck bills? Now stop it, will you? Stop it. But that was just the beginning. When we pulled into Madison and 53rd, all the passengers got off at the same stop. All of them. They all went into the same building where I work. They all got on the same elevator. All right, don't push floors, please. And they all got out at the same floor, my floor. I have an appointment with Mr. Elmore. And I could talk to you, Mr. Elmore. Look, we all have to get in line or something. Blair Thomas and Kane reception. No, Mr. Thomas. I'm sorry. I'm trying. I'm sorry, Miss, but I'm already ten minutes late for my appointment. Would you please Lady, see please, if he's there? I only have one pair of hands. If you'll just be quiet and give me a chance. What? Oh, oh, no, I wasn't talking to you, Mr. Thomas. No, sir. Okay, everyone, now quiet down and let's take it one at a time. One at a time! Good morning, Mr. Nolan. Uh, morning, Elaine. Some madhouse out there. It's getting worse all the time. You know, everything has gone real goofy this morning. Have you noticed anything strange going on uh, besides the riot outside? Oh, I certainly have. The teletypes are coming in by the bushel. Hope we have a profit-sharing bonus this Christmas. Huh? What do you mean? Our sales. They're fantastic in ten major cities. Every Blair, Thomas, and Kane product is suddenly booming. Well, I've been around long enough to see a product catch fire, but 32 of them. Never. Well, let me see those teletypes. Oh, this is incredible. And Banish is right in there with him. Banish is leading the field, as Mr. Blair would put it. Looks like our lucky day, huh? Well, I'm not so sure it's luck. Um, 
What else is world shaking? Uh, call Bill Paris about lunch today. I'll do that right away. A funny thing happened out in Jackson Heights this morning. Every dog on our block bit the poor mailman. He was a wreck. Hastings and Cole, good morning. Uh, Bill Paris, please. Yeah, well, remind me to tell you what happened on our bus. Hello? Uh, Bill, Danny Nolan. Oh, yeah, Danny. Look, I can't make lunch today. I'll be lucky if I ever get anything to eat again. Oh, things jumping at your place, too? Aren't those teletypes the kind you have daydreams about? Nightmares, you mean? You've got a funny sense of humor today. What do you mean? I mean, we're practically wiped out. If this trend doesn't reverse itself in an hour, we'll have to throw in the towel. Oh, Bill, I don't get it. Hey, what sort of practices are you guys using over at your shop? Everything you're handling is turning to gold. The rest of Madison Avenue is getting ready to move to the Bowery. You mean our products are the only ones that are moving? Well, if you call Grease Lightning moving, no not a recorded sale in the yes. country for anything except Blair products yes. today. Danny, we have been friends for a long time. You sure there isn't anything under the counter going on over there? Uh, Bill, look, I'll call you back. If I'm still here. If not, try Welfare Island. Mr. Blair has just called a special conference. You want it right now in the lion's den. Okay, man. Let's get in unison here. Well, I suppose you've noticed the teletypes. I'd say that this is a 14-chart day for Blair, Thomas, and Kane. Men are brought you in here to see that this roller coaster stays on the track. But it doesn't make sense, Mr. Blair. I've been talking to a friend of mine over at Hastings and Cole. They're worried. <laughs> worried? They're frantic. Walker, Algren, and Molly have already pulled down the flag. Hastings is next. He'll be turning in his diner's card before noon. Take my word for it. Well, you mean they're, uh, they're out of business? Yep. And we're just starting the jet fuel, pumping it in. When we really start to travel? Va boom! <laughs> like that. Right through the gold barrier. But it doesn't make sense. I did the research on all our products, and we ought to have about one-eighth of the market, not all of it. I planned the campaign for Banish, but I didn't think it would sell like it's been going all morning. Why, two stores in Brooklyn are sold out already. Uh, you know what? Something is wrong with the law of averages. You just can't figure on 100% of all sales. And you can't figure on traffic going all the same way, and all boy babies, and all baggage all dumped under one letter. Oh, don't give me that talk about law of averages. That's just another law made to be broken. We're going to stock the shelves of every store in this country shoulder high. The other agencies can pass out severance pay. We'll have a Christmas bonus that'll put a caddy in everyone's garage. And Danny, you're in for a very pleasant surprise when you pick up your paycheck on Friday. <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> Now, by lunchtime, everyone knew that something was going on. It was all around you. The traffic on Madison Avenue was jammed going downtown, just a few cars coming uptown. One store would be packed to the door, another store almost empty. There were extras on the street with headline stories from all over the world. Strange, half-funny, half-frightening stories. Dateline London. There was an unusual scene at the famed Ascot Club this noon when Sir John Avery Avery answered a waiter in the dining room. No mutton! No mutton! I beg your pardon. No mutton? Well, my good man, I have been having lunch at this club every Thursday since 1921. And every Thursday I've had mutton for lunch. And do you mean to stand there and tell me that the... No mutton, Sir John. Deadline, Lucerne, Switzerland. It is with considerable embarrassment that we are forced to report that last night at exactly 12 o'clock midnight, every Swiss watch and clock in Lucerne stopped. In an interview with this reporter, Francis Bassler, president of the world-famous Bassler Watch Company, said... I can't explain it. Uh, there is no explanation. Uh, pardon me, but uh, do you happen to have the correct time? <laughs> Dateline Moscow. It has been reported to the Kremlin that this morning nobody rode to work on the subway. Everyone walked to work. Since it is known throughout the world that the subway was invented by Russia, and since Moscow has the most beautiful subway system ever built, it is hereby ordered that everyone will ride the subway on their way home from work. Everyone, that is an order. 
I went back to the office after lunch. The place was still spinning like a king-size squirrel cage, and most of the executives were walking around with dollar signs in their eyes. <laughs> then I heard a sound which seemed a little out of place in all the money-making merriment, and I saw Elaine dabbing at her eyes and trying not to let me see her face. Well, look, anyone interested in a gray flannel shoulder, it's available at the moment. It's, it's nothing, Mr. Nolan, please. I'm sorry. I just being very foolish. A woman's prerogative and privilege. Nothing I can do to help? Not unless you'd like to go down to Washington and blow up the Pentagon. I just got a cable from Jerry. He's my fiancé, stationed in Germany. His Christmas leave has been canceled. We were going to be married. Well, any reason for his leave being canceled? The wire didn't say. It just said all leaves canceled. Oh, who wants to get married anyhow? I suddenly had a sort of strange feeling in the pit of my stomach. I guess maybe that was the first time I began to feel a little frightened. The world seemed to be slowly sliding off its axis. And all at once I wanted to be with Maggie and Adele and in my own apartment where I could shut the door and feel reasonably safe. <laughs> I walked home, and as I turned the corner into our apartment, I saw a lot of equipment spread all over the pavement, hoses and pumps and things. The super was talking to a bunch of workmen as I passed. How do you like this, Mr. Nolan? Believe it or not, every one of them washing machines in the basement overflowed. Almost floated the whole place off the block. I walked into the lobby, and there was a sign saying, All elevators out of order. I climbed the ten flights to my apartment. Adele met me at the door. Mr. Blair has called three times. He wants you to come back to the office. Well, if he calls again, I'm not here. I don't want to talk to him. Danny, what's happening? What's going wrong? I went to the supermarket this afternoon, and there wasn't a clerk in the place. They all stayed home. Yeah, that figures. And there was a Santa Claus near Herald Square. He had to have an armed guard escort him to the bank. He'd collected so much money. But none of the others had collected a cent. You know, this is what I told Mr. Blair at the meeting, but he wouldn't listen. I told him that something has happened to the law of averages. Has a hospital called yet? Not yet. No, oh, I'll get it. Telegram for Mr. Nolan. Sign here. Okay. Here you are. Thanks, mister. Danny, it, it, it isn't about Maggie, it, it, is it? Oh, Danny, what is it? It's from the commanding officer of my reserve unit. I've been ordered to report for active duty in 24 hours. And so tonight, a special emergency session of the United Nations has been called to deal with the present world crisis. The issues are these. If war should come, the casualties could very easily happen only to one side, our side or the enemy's. In every country, orders for total mobilization have been issued. By dawn, the world will be an armed camp, waiting. The enemy powers have sent their ultimatum to the United Nations. Surrender or perish. Will we call their bluff, or can we afford to take a chance and oppose them? Tonight's vote will answer that all-important question. So, stay tuned. Well, there's the answer for the telegram and the reason why Elaine and her soldier in Germany won't be getting married this Christmas. Oh, this is what I've been afraid might happen. All of a sudden, something which is very funny becomes very serious. As serious as survival of the fittest. Or the luckiest. Oh, Danny, don't talk like that. Yeah, the day the law of averages ran out. That's what they'll call it in the history books. If there is any history after tomorrow. Well, I hope Maggie and I don't have a boy. Hello? Yes? Danny, it's the hospital. Shouldn't be too long now, Mr. Nolan. Would you like to listen to the radio? We've got one on in the recreation room. No, thanks. It's awful, isn't it? I mean, about the UN. Have they voted yet? No, sir, not yet. Uh, Danny. Uh, Danny, may I see you for a minute? I'll call you as soon as anything happens. 
About the baby, I mean. Thank you. Well, Mr. Blair? I tried to get you this afternoon. Yeah, I know. I want to talk to you, Danny. What for? Break some more laws? Don't you know what's happened? The agency's out of business, Danny. What do you mean? We haven't a single account left. Everything's down the drain. Gone. So, it's happened to you, too. The clients decided they didn't need an agency anymore. With everything selling like wildfire, why have salesmen? Why have advertising? Why radio, TV? Why an agency? They all cancel their contracts. All of them. What do you plan to do? Well, under the circumstances, nothing. I'm going to the Pentagon in the morning to see if they need me. Later, when this is all over, maybe I'll try again. There's a chance of getting a foothold, even in the ad business. You mean you're starting to believe that there is such a thing as chance? Well, sure there is. Well, at least there used to be. But not anymore. It'll come back. How? You're going to make it come back? You didn't want anything to do with it before because it got in your way. And you got me hoping to beat it, too. Now look what's happened. Mr. Nolan? Yes? Doctor told me to tell you that it's a boy. A boy? Yes, sir. What are we going to do, Danny? What's the matter, Danny? You can't have everything you want, you know. Well, yes, Doctor, <laughs> but... A boy. <laughs> the other baby's fine, too. First twins we've had all day. A healthy boy and a beautiful, beautiful girl. After I'd seen Maggie and the twins, Mr. Blair and I left the hospital together. And I can't tell you how good it was to see the traffic running in both directions again on Lexington Avenue. I was even happy when we couldn't get a cab. Mr. Blair walked east, and I started west across town. I really didn't understand everything that had happened, what it meant. 24 hours out of our lives with nothing working right. Why had it happened? Mr. Blair had been so sure of a golden future, so sure you could force your luck, so sure that laws were made to be broken. And now the laws were back again and things were normal again. Christmas was on its way, singing down from a gray blue spire of a lonely Madison Avenue church. And then just for a few moments, I had a glimpse of what it all might have meant. Maybe we can twist fate to get our own way, but we'd better be careful. Where you break a law of nature, you do so at your own peril. And you better hope that the law you've broken remains in force to be broken again. This day was the shadow of what would happen if we all followed separate tracks and denied each other an equal chance. That was the warning of the big event. You have been listening to the CBS Radio Workshop and The Big Event, an original radio fantasy by Gloria Dapper and Draper Lewis. Musical score composed by Ben Ludlow, conducted by Alfredo Antonini, and produced and directed in New York by Paul Roberts. William Redfield was heard as Danny Nolan, Ralph Bell as Mr. Blair, Ethel Owen as Mrs. Robertson, and Roger DeCoven as Dr. Johnson. Others in the cast included Elaine Rost, Ivor Francis, Herm Dinkin, and Ruby Dee. This is Warren Sweeney inviting you to listen again next week when, from New York, the CBS Radio Workshop presents All is Bright by Henry E. Fritsch, the story of the fabulous search for the origin of one of the best-loved Christmas carols, finally traced to the singing of a trained songbird. Next week on the CBS Radio Workshop. CBS Radio Network.